the next step is to fill the engine with the operating fluids. In general, when checking the fluid levels, make sure that the vehicle is in a horizontal position. Even a slight tilt can lead to considerably incorrect measurements. Before filling, and before starting the engine for the first time, check that all the separation points for the coolant, engine oil, gear oil and power steering hydraulics are clean and dry. Any areas that are not in this condition should be cleaned and dried. First, the power steering hydraulics is filled to make sure that the power steering pump does not run dry when we first start the engine. Next, fill the coolant. Then fit adapter 1274 stroke 8. Please note, to ensure that all the coolant hoses have been installed correctly, it is recommended that you perform a leakage test using VAG 1274. As the cooling system is empty, you will have to pump for quite a long time until the appropriate pressure is built up. In this case, no leaks. The cooling system is filled using the cooling system charge unit VAS 6096. As this is a tool that has been in use for quite a long time, we won't go into the precise procedure in any more detail at this point. Follow the instructions in the workshop manual. Once filled, check that there is enough coolant in the expansion tank. The coolant level is above the max marking, which will help during the next step. A breather point located under this trim panel must then be opened. To remove the trim panel, push hard in the direction of the luggage compartment pan, releasing the front holding lugs on the trim and thereby allowing the trim panel to be removed. This is where the breather point is located. To be able to access the breather point more easily, remove this screw. As a certain amount of coolant will leak out while bleeding, place absorbent cleaner paper around the breather point. Open the breather screw until coolant leaks out. Then close the breather screw. Caution, when refitting the trim panel, the holding lugs can easily break off if the trim panel is not pushed hard enough in the direction of the luggage compartment pan. For this reason, push hard and make sure that the four holding lugs are engaged correctly in the radiator grill. Check that the trim panel is fitted securely to the radiator grill. Then, check the coolant level and correct it if required. You can tell that the coolant is filled to the correct level when it reaches the maximum marking when the engine is cold. Caution! You must be able to hear and feel the cap engage when closing it. The next step is to fill the engine with engine oil. First, pre-fill the system with 7 litres of engine oil. Then, run the engine for approximately 30 seconds and top up with another three liters. To do this, the fuel pump fuse must first be inserted. It is recommended that a second person is available to help start the engine for the first time. One person starts the engine and uses the dash panel to acoustically and visually monitor that the oil pressure is building up. After 30 seconds, he turns the engine off again. The other person tops up the power steering hydraulic fluid level in a precise manner, 
to make sure that the hydraulic pump does not run dry. Next, another three liters of engine oil are added and the hydraulic fluid level is filled to the level for cold oil. There is a measurement area on the oil dipstick for cold oil, approximately 20 degrees Celsius, and another measurement area for oil at the operating temperature, which is approximately 80 degrees Celsius. The oil is filled to a level that lies within the 20 degrees Celsius marking. Caution. The cover must always be screwed on fully when performing the oil level check. Please observe the procedure and notes in the workshop manual. Caution. The oil level must never be filled above the temperature dependent maximum markings. Any excess oil must be siphoned off until the level is within the 20 degrees Celsius marking. Then, run the engine warm in order to fill the engine oil to the correct level. Set the rotary knob for temperature selection to full heating output. Doing so fully distributes the coolant throughout the cooling system. To quickly heat up the engine oil, set the rotary knob for the blower to the lowest speed. The compressor must be switched off. To check the engine oil level, the oil temperature must be between 100 degrees Celsius and 110 degrees Celsius. Then allow the engine to idle for two minutes. Turn off the engine and, after waiting for two minutes, check the oil level. The oil dipstick has two display zones, fill and do not fill. After an oil change service, fill with engine oil until the oil level reaches the middle of the do not fill display zone. Caution! Operating the vehicle with an oil level that lies outside the display zones do not fill or fill is not permitted. In our case, the oil level is not quite correct. On the vehicle shown here from model year 2012 and fitted with an R-Tronic gearbox, one millimeter within the display zones corresponds to a quantity of oil of approximately 0.04 liters. Approximately 22 millimeters is still required to reach the desired oil level. This means that 0.9 liters of oil is required. Adding this quantity achieves the correct oil level. Please note, from model year 2013, the R-Tronic will be replaced by the new 7-speed dual-clutch gearbox OBZ. Vehicles fitted with the OBZ gearbox have a different oil reservoir, which has again led to changes when setting the correct engine oil level. For this reason, please observe the relevant description in the workshop manual. Further information on this topic can be found in the Audi Service TV program Checking the oil level on the Audi R8 from 20th of February 2013. Please note, in order to check the gearbox oil level correctly on vehicles equipped with the gearbox oil cooling function, the operating gearbox oil temperature must first exceed 75 degrees Celsius. It is only once this temperature is exceeded that the temperature regulator opens and the gear oil cooler is flushed. More detailed information can be found in Self-Study Program 613 Audi R8 Power Transmission. Caution. The way in which the gear oil level is being checked here is incorrect. The oil running out appears to indicate that the oil level is sufficient. Let's see what happens if we open the control screw. 
Now, things look a bit different. No oil comes out. What has happened? Let's look at this more closely. The control screw is cup-shaped and is installed in a downwards diagonal position. When the vehicle is in motion, oil runs into the control bore and into the cup-shaped control screw. As you can see here, although the oil level is clearly below the target level, oil remains in the control screw and in the control bore. When the control screw is opened, oil runs out, giving the impression that the oil level is OK. To check the oil level correctly, the screw must be removed completely. If there is a slight continuous oil flow, then the oil level is correct. When checking the gear oil, observe the instructions and the test conditions in the workshop manual. After working on the fuel tank on the Audi R8, a leakage test must be performed on the fuel supply system. Tester VAS 6615 is specifically designed for performing a leakage test on the Audi R8. Before performing the leakage test on the fuel supply system, a functional test must first be performed on the VAS 6615. Connect the tester to the compressed air supply, but not to the fuel tank. The cutoff valve must be opened by moving it into the horizontal position. A pressure of approximately 180 millibar must be reached. Now close the cutoff valve by moving it into the vertical position. The device is working correctly if the pressure has not fallen by more than 10 millibar after two minutes. This tester shown here is OK and is ready for use. If the target values deviate, the VAS 6615 is faulty and must be replaced. Before performing the leakage test, the right-hand engine control unit and bracket must be released in order to allow the breather line leading to the activated charcoal filter to be pulled off. Push the release button and remove the line. Seal the line using the appropriate VAS 6615 plug. Remove the tank cap and screw on the VAS 6615 adapter tightly. Check that the tank cap seal is securely fitted. Connect the pressure line from the tester to the adapter and open the cutoff valve. The tank system is now subjected to pressure. Caution. If the pressure used when filling the fuel tank or during the subsequent pressure test exceeds 200 millibar, the device is faulty and must be immediately disconnected from the compressed air supply. After filling for five minutes, close the cutoff valve. A pressure of approximately 180 millibar should be present. In order to check the amount by which the pressure has reduced, write down the precise value. In our example, a pressure of 190 millibar is noted down. The pressure must then not fall by more than 10 millibar within two minutes. Please note, during this time, check the fuel tank system from below. The system is checked from below because slight leaks from points that lie below the fuel level do not produce an immediately detectable reduction in pressure. Slight leaks below the fuel level can only be detected via a visual inspection, as this is where fuel leaks can be seen. Pay particular attention to the hose connecting the two fuel tanks. After two minutes have passed, read off the pressure again. A slight increase in pressure can be expected as the air in the fuel tank heats up a little. In our example, the target value has been reached and the pressure can now be reduced. Caution. The area in which you are working must be well ventilated due to the release of fuel vapours. If the target value is not reached, identify and rectify the leak and repeat the leakage test. All of the components used to perform the leakage test can then be disconnected. Push the breather line on correctly until the lock audibly engages and pull hard on the breather line to check that it's correctly attached. We always want to improve our programs. 
Please send any suggestions, improvements and suggested topics you may have to audi.service.tv at audi.de.